We're all still burnt and disappointed by the launch of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Some of us had hoped that with the drop of the DLC, there would be a slew of patches that addressed all, if not most, of these concerns. We were sadly mistaken. <gasps> we have been duped, bamboozled, and dare I say, Smeckledorfed. There are things to like about the Teal Mask DLC, but there are bigger looming issues that Game Freak has yet to address. I don't want to be too negative, even though they really deserve it. So let's focus on the positives as long as we can, and then we'll shit on them. Hello world and all who inhabit it, it is I the Great Sayran and Pokemon is really breaking my heart. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet launch was so bad that even though I'm a huge Pokemon fan, I was turned off at the fact that a game like this even existed. Nintendo is known for their extreme levels of quality fun games and it's why I fell in love with them. I have a video dumping on this game and explaining how they broke my heart so be sure to check that out. Also be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel because Bulbasaur. This DLC is one of two parts. The Indigo Disc launches later on, but for now we have the Teal Mask. For $35, this new method of two-part DLC post-game releases as opposed to a likely equally rushed and flawed third game isn't half bad. I don't feel jipped being asked for that even if the main story portion is a little bit over six hours. There's a lot of raw content in Pokemon games and even beyond, you can make your own content. I can't fully judge this entire DLC based off this first part since we got more post-game features with the Crown Tundra than we did the Isle of Armor even though I personally like the Isle of Armor more. We can't say that the whole DLC is trash, but so far in the Till Mask, I'm a little underwhelmed. Again, there are cool parts, and I want to acknowledge those. This game's flaws are fundamental and boil down to the company involved, not necessarily what this game is, or rather tries to be. I promise, I was one of the ones who thought this game was going to change my life, but as soon as I finished Area Zero, I stopped playing. I did stream a bit more of the post game preparing for the DLC and other events, but mostly this game disappointed me so much, I left it alone. I had extremely low expectations for the Till Mask after forcing myself to finish Violet's base game. I've seen mixed reviews online, but but nothing I didn't expect. One of the things Pokemon always does is bring in older fan favorite Pokemon back into the newer games. I think everyone has the misconception that Pokemon is about the combat and the story and whatever else. While those things are important, it's really about collecting and raising all the mons. I'm not a hundred percenter, and I say that often, but I do put in a genuine effort to complete my Pokedex. Seeing all the returning mons and a few new ones is refreshing. As a kid, I never cared to complete my Pokedex, but as an adult, oh my god, I have been playing Pokemon for over 20 years. <clears throat> As an adult, there is something oddly satisfying about completing this task. As soon as I started, I immediately bought Pokeballs and started capturing everything new. This area is pretty sizable for DLC, but I don't think it's too big or has a bunch of wasted space. In the base game, looking back, I would have taken a 25% smaller map if it meant a more polished experience. I thought that's what we'd get here. Smaller map, more polish. Eh. The story is interesting enough. Pokemon lore is always about the Pokemon themselves and rarely about the people. They did throw in some of that with the two characters you interact with the most, Kyrian and Carmine. I don't really try to connect with the characters in the games. It's mostly the Pokemon that have all the personality since, you know, <laughs> no one talks. The lore with the Loyal 3 initially gave me Suicune, Entei, and Raikou vibes, but after the plot twist, I decided that that wasn't a copy and paste. Still, they didn't do anything new, but I do think they tried to put forth an effort with the story overall. For instance, I like some of the cutscenes, but I have improvements they could make. At the end of the day, it's still Pokemon, so you're going to have fun, but man does this game try to get in its own way of that. I want so much better for this game and the series. The launch of Scarlet and Violet was commercially successful, but broke the hearts of a lot of fans, myself included. After playing the Till Mask, I can also bet that the Indigo Disc won't be our savior either. Feedback is, and I have a lot of it. Firstly, can we get better cutscenes? Some of the most important moments in the game can be differentiated by the change in camera angles or the quality of these cutscenes versus the fuzzy image the game normally spits out. These could be further enhanced. I know pre-rendered cutscenes eat a bunch of storage for something you'll see once in game and maybe never again, but these could be a bit more polished. The end of Area Zero and the base game's last few scenes gave me goosebumps. A game fully at that quality would have made so many people respect the series even just a little bit. I don't think the Teal Mask cutscenes are bad, but after playing Tears of the Kingdom, the quality just wasn't comparable. One of the things that pissed me off to no end is Pokemon Masters EX. The game itself is great, I'm not mad at that part. It has fun new battle mechanics and stands on its own. I was really into it after I finished Pokemon Sword and Shield. The coolest thing about this game, and also the thing that pisses me off, is this game has voice acting. They even have actors for the newest Pokemon characters. Listen to Nimona's. Pokemon battling, it's so much better. So much more fun than I ever even knew! Let's have us a fruitful battle!
It makes no sense that this mobile game, and trust me, I love mobile games. This free to play gacha game gets voice acting, but my now $95 console game gets nothing. Pokemon Company, come close. Yeah, you come, come here, come here. Use the same damn voice actors. I don't need them speaking all the time, but having some type of lines here and there would be great. A pre-recorded grunt or something as I read through the text, I don't know, something. I didn't realize how quiet this game was until I saw Ogre Pond and realized that the cutscene was damn near silent. As a AAA flagship from Nintendo, it's insulting that we get this. If you're not going to do voice acting, at least give us more expressive characters. Sea of Stars is one of my favorite games of the year. It has so much personality, which is why I usually love indie games. It is a 2D top-down pixel-like game half the price of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, a third if you include the DLC. These characters have more expressions and personality than anyone in Pokemon Currently. I don't like comparing indie games to AAA games, but in this instance, Sea of Stars clears. Side note, I do want to make a full video about Sea of Stars on the Nintendo Switch because I absolutely adore this game. I've just been ridiculously busy, but I'll find a way to make it work. I have a lot of pent up aggression towards Pokemon lately. I love this franchise as it was my very first game. I was playing it before I could read and knew which attacks did what based on trial and error and the anime. As a fan, it's not even about me being satisfied as much as it is the game's history being preserved. My oldest son turns four this year and I'm getting him a Switch Lite. He already loves Mario and now he's getting more and more curious about Pokemon. The games that shaped my childhood are now shaping my kids so I may get a little passionate when talking about this. I want to look back at Scarlet and Violet and see them as a lesson learned and turning point, not the fault point of Pokemon's downfall. The Teal Mask DLC is fine. If you played and beat Scarlet and Violet, then you know what to expect. It doesn't fix anything wrong with the game, but it makes you feel less crappy about your initial purchase. If you're coming out the gate brand new, I don't know if it's worth the bundle they sell. Maybe see if the base game is your gem first before hopping into this more of the same DLC. It's Pokemon, and it's getting better, but it doesn't actually fix what's wrong. For a game that does fix what's wrong, be sure to check out my review of Armor Core 6 on the PS5. That game was almost too difficult to be fun. Also be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.